Constructing an adequate burn chamber is an essential part of creating an effective training burn in one of Draeger's Class A Swede survival systems. It is very important to use the correct fuel load for a successful burn. It is also important that the fire load and subsequent burn contributes to the sustained structural integrity of the burn chamber and overall training structure. The following tutorial illustrates the correct method for building the fuel load in a standard Draeger Swede survival burn chamber. The fuel load consists of two elements, a 55 gallon drum to be filled with wood for ignition and a sustained burn, OSB oriented strand board, which will be used to line the walls and ceiling of the burn chamber. Remember to take appropriate safety precautions when cutting wood. When building a standard 8x10 foot Draeger burn chamber, Draeger recommends that you fill the 55 gallon drum with the contents of two standard 48 by 40 inch pallets. Cut the pallets lengthwise to make six long boards and position these sections upright in the rear of the drum, opposite the opening. Then cut the boards of the remaining pallet into individual sections and fill the bottom front of the crib until the tall sections are tight against the drum and the smaller sections. You want to make sure that the tall sections stay retained within the drum during the burn evolution, so it is important to have a nice tight fit of all the pallet sections. Using a mix of hardwood and softwood to fill the crib is ideal. Softwood is a good alternative to accelerate the initial burn, while hardwood is a good alternative for heat and longevity. In wet and cold climates, it is recommended that a small section of OSB be used along with the long boards as kindling. When the drum load is complete, you will place the crib in a rear corner in preparation for the burn. During multiple burns, Make sure to alternate the rear corner location where it is placed, so as to not degrade a specific side of the container prematurely. When positioned, make sure the opening is facing the observation area for full access with a hose line. The second part of the fuel load consists of the placement of OSB board of the ceiling and walls of the burn chamber. Draeger's policy is to use five sheets, eight by four foot of OSB board to load these areas. Draeger's burn chambers are designed with chains and sets of slots on the walls to hold the four-foot sections of the boards, as well as chains on the ceiling to hold the ceiling boards. Lift the chains and affix a board into the slot on the side wall. Then repeat the procedure on the opposite wall. Next, affix two OSB boards on the chains under the ceiling, side by side, lengthwise from the rear door. Make sure that the boards are overlapping in such a way that prevents the fire from reaching behind the boards, which could cause rapid consumption of the fuel. The goal is to have consistent fuel consumption. This is an example of how to correctly place the boards. Next, cut one board in half crosswise into two to four foot sections and fix these two sections into the slots on the rear doors behind the chains. It is important to cut it evenly so that both sections are secured by the upper and lower slots. Put the cut edges facing up rather than facing each other. Also, make sure that you have a nice seal between the ends of the sheets at the corners. It's important that the boards are flush up against the ceiling and walls. You will want to limit any gaps. If the ceiling chains are situated such that the top boards bow, Use a 2x4 or similar board to bring them flush with the ceiling. It is important to limit the amount of space that smoke and flames can travel between the boards on the wall and ceiling sections of the burn chamber, where you may not be able to access them with a hose line. If the air is wet and cold, it is recommended to dry out the burn chamber with a torch prior to an evolution. Here is how a proper burn chamber should look. By following these instructions and creating a proper load, you have taken the appropriate steps toward achieving a successful burn evolution while protecting the structural integrity of the burn chamber for many subsequent training sessions.